Yo, Urban Politicians TV, Big Ant. I got she you up in here, man. She show. I ain't in Dallas, man. I ain't fucking yeah. around. Houston to the D, you already know, man. Yeah, no, we rock. Damn, when did you uh start your channel, bro? Because it's like, okay, you done had hella growth. I've been tuning in to you not that long. I've been tuning in to you probably like five, six months. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. when did you actually start your shit? Okay, uh... The motherfucking channel got started in the end of towards the end of 2017, as far as like creating the Urban Politicians channel. Yeah. But a nigga wasn't uploading to that motherfucker. A nigga was just like, a nigga had a podcast. This shit really started out as a podcast. Yeah. Urban Politicians TV podcast. Okay. But a nigga wanted to have a whole YouTube platform and media platform with it from the jump. Yeah. But the podcast was just gonna be the startup of it. Yeah, okay. So the goal when I when I, when the nigga first came together was to like do a whole just like media shit. So yeah. that's why I put the TV on the end of that bitch from the jump. So I uh that was like September, man, right when Hurricane Harvey hit Houston. Damn. I came up with the idea through uh for the podcast, the urban politician shit. Through uh, I was watching Joe Budden shit every day. I was hooked on Joe Budden podcast. Man. Of course, I was watching No Jumper. Uh, I had already been listening to Rap Radar audio before they got visual. Yeah, I was actually listening to Joe Budden podcast, man. Before that nigga, I even knew it was a podcast. I didn't even know what it was, but niggas would break down clips from the podcast because they didn't have. I don't think they really had visual like that at first. Yeah, so I would just see it in on the YouTube shit where they'll say Joe Button says such 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 and such. And this is like the time he'd start beefing with Drake a little bit and yeah. other little topics. Niggas would just take clips of his shit and upload it to YouTube. So I was just tapping into that shit. And man, I ended up uh realizing okay this is what a podcast is and I had been watching Tech Stone shit a little wow, bit. Man, well listening to him. Yeah. yeah. I would listen to his shit. Then I started seeing drink champ shit, so then it was no jump. I'm like, man, I gotta fuck with this shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just watching them all, listening to them all. And then next thing I know, uh, my cousin at the crib one day, and I was putting him on that Joe Button episode when they was making fun of Malai Michelle. Yeah. And I was like, man, this shit hilarious, dog. And my cousin was like, man, you ought to do this shit, nigga. Like, you be. I always talking about rap, nigga. We can do some shit like this. And I was like, man, let's get it, nigga. Let's. I said, what you think we gotta do? He's like, man, all you need is a computer and a mic. Yeah. So I was like, fuck it. So I had talked to one of my partners about it. And we was talking about, man, yeah, bro, all them niggas be doing is politicking. They just politicking on that bitch. Like, yeah. that's all niggas is doing. They ain't doing too much. So, nigga, we ended up going and uh, I said, well, niggas politicking. But see, I was like, well, we gotta call this whole politicking because that's all we doing. Yeah. You know? And I looked up the definition of politicians, and it was like, hey, niggas is expressing their beliefs. But I was like, man, I, I gotta have some type of little hood feel to it. Yeah. I don't want the hoe to be proper, but I don't want it to be too ratchet. Exactly. So I was gonna go with politicking, but I ain't wanna put CK. Cause I was like, man, I got a lot of crip partners. Yeah. And I was like, man, I don't want my crip partners to feel like, ah, oh, man, what's a, you know, yeah, even yeah, though I know them niggas don't give a fuck, yeah, man, it's just self-conscious. Yeah, it's just yeah, self-conscious. Yeah. Like, I don't want my crip partners to feel like I'm CK and them, and then I don't want to put CC on that hoe because then my blood partners yeah. be like, hey, you a favorite fool with the crips, which, trust me, they don't look at me like that at all, yeah. but that's just my self-conscious shit, dog. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Because I, I grew up around all these niggas, I know what they claim, and da, 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 which they don't look at me like that anyways, but I, uh, I was like, well, fuck it, I gotta call it politicians. So I was like, I gotta have something on it for letting know I'm represent for the streets and the people. And I was like, but I don't want it to be too too ratchet to not be able to brand. Yeah. And I was like, what's a word that black people, white people look at and they know it got something to do with hip hop culture? And that's when I came with Urban. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was like, fuck it, Urban politicians, we rolling. Yeah, cause that shit pretty much staying consistent. Like, yeah. it's coming as a brand now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's feeling, you feel it now. Yeah, and yeah. And as far as like, so when you said you started with the podcast, it was just audio at first, no video. Video. Yeah. So that's how I started the YouTube channel, cause I knew I wanted to have a YouTube with this shit, and it was me, my partners, and me, my partner, and two of my cousins. So I was like, I just started saying fuck it. I was taking my cell phone. 
and we went to Sam Ash and I bought all this yeah. little shit, nigga. It was like four, three niggas sharing one mic, cause we ain't no shit. Yeah. We was sharing one mic on the episode. It was all fucked up, but we got that bitch out. And I was anxious, all that nigga. As long as this hoe get out. So I was like, man, I'm finna do behind the scenes on my cell phone and upload it to the channel. So that's why the channel has started 2017. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then every episode we do, I try to get some behind the scenes shit, record on the cell phone and, and upload it to the YouTube. So we was rocking like that, man. And then eventually, nigga, we end up, you know, going into the next year. We got it sounded good on the real, uh, we had it on some shit at first. We couldn't get it on Apple right away. Yeah. So then we ended up being able to get it on the podcast on Apple and like SoundCloud and shit. So then, probably then about, I guess about episode 12, we got the audio right because our audio was fucked up. Yeah. So we did like 40 episodes on that bitch. But I always wanted to go hit the streets and do interviews. I came up watching. You know, I was always watching Alex Alonzo Street Games. Yeah. I always watched Vlad. Yeah. Uh, I was a big ass Smack DVD nigga and hood or every day. If you had a DVD back in the day, Gutter Beast. TV, everything. Beast. And them all, yeah. that was just like three. But I used to, nigga, I had partners who was like trapping in high school and shit. So them niggas had apartments like Fred, like in high school or fresh out there though. Yeah. And you know, niggas ain't had cable. So niggas was in that bitch watching DVDs all day from yeah. the corner store. And we'll swap the DVDs out. The DVD man used to pull up to my nigga crib. Cause yeah. he know he finna get off all them hoes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's when we was on. So they doing, you know, you gotta think how Smack was a genius, man. Yeah. The nigga was doing interviews, vlogs, and shooting music videos, and hosting freestyle battles on one DVD. Man, that's right. one platform. You know so, what I'm saying? So what do you think your main thing is? Cause you do do so much. And then yeah. uh, some of the shit you mentioned earlier about starting with your cousins and shit. That's one yeah. thing I want to know because nigga, you do a lot of shit. So I was like, yeah. this nigga either don't sleep or he got a team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't sleep. Yeah, I was like, I don't okay. sleep. I ain't got no team. Cause like my my niggas and my family that was with me, this ain't they passion. It's mine. Exactly. So they wasn't on it like me. Like I'm the nigga like, hey nigga, we need to meet up every Saturday and get to work, nigga. Yeah. Fuck all this bullshit. We need to be on time. If something going on, nigga, we need to have constant com content coming consistently. Yeah. So nigga, I'm like that. Like I get up every day and let's go get it. Let's find something to do, nigga. We gotta work every day. Like, nigga, I'm trying to be like Mayweather and Kobe and LeBron. Yeah. And, and, and I'm mixtape Lil Wayne, nigga, three. You know, go to the, when he was going to the studio eight hours Bro, a day. that's funny you said that because I was going to use that comparison for you. Like, yeah. I do feel like right now you like Wayne or 2 chains when he had that 65 feature nigga, season. I'm Wayne, nigga, I'm you Wayne. You're going stupid, bro. I'm Wayne. I, I, go, I, I use they, the way they grinded to get with Ed and implement it to my grind. How you going to be great at something when you don't do it every day? Yeah. You got to treat your passion more than just a hobby. So yeah. I'm like, if I want to be a content creator and fuck with this rap shit, I got to fuck with it every day. And what's the end goal for you? Because I hear you say you want to be a personality. That's yeah, what I am a personality. That's you what, what made me feel like you're different. That's what set you apart. Yeah, yeah. You're, not, you're not really a blog. Nah. You saw, nah. I feel like you're in your own lane. When you exactly. say you're the biggest interviewer in Houston, yeah. was there anybody before you that made you like, oh, I'm finna take that spot? Nah, wasn't nobody in the streets doing interviews. The only nigga we had in the streets moving like me was that nigga uh, D Solo? Shot the D Solo on yeah. Street Flavor. That's like our little local hood okay. TV station where they be in the clubs and shit, interviewing everybody. D Solo yeah. and them used to pull up hood to hood, but it was more classier, a little bit like, well, more professional because he used to go on TV. Yeah, he used yeah, to be yeah. on a real TV station and yeah. shit. So it would go on TV. He pull up in the hood with the microphone and you know, or go to the club. They had Slim Thug on there. All the used to rappers. <laughs> so yeah. he been around forever. So shout out to D Solo, Street Flavor and shit. So yeah. uh And I notice a lot of people noticing you, bro. I seen yeah. like Wallow267, like oh, yeah. in your pigs, I seen shit. Yeah. Of course, the shit with you and Vlad. Yeah, Wallow, uh shout out to Wallow. I ran into him last year, Trey Day. He showed mad love. He been fucking with me, just you know, following and just seeing what I got going on. So people yes. noticing you, what do you think yeah. like was your do you feel like you done had your big break or what was your first 
break to that next level, you feel like? I ain't like, went to the it, next level yet. I'm still in the trenches. Was it an interview, though? Did you feel that got you some momentum? Or was it one uh, moment that feel like, okay, my, my YouTube coming. channel got momentum when I, because I be doing the commentary. Because like I say, I came in this shit showing my face. Yeah. I wanted to be a personality. I ain't want to just be no blogger that's not being seen. I'm like, bro, I got to, I want to do it all. I don't yeah. want niggas to be able to box me in one lane. So I came in this, I was showing my face and let niggas see who I was on camera. So um, the first thing that got me rolling was uh, I did a video with my partner in my front yard talking about Rollo. Yeah. And Rollo, uh, it was when he caught that case. Yeah. So that shit went kind of like low-key viral on YouTube and did 40,000 views. Oh, yeah. It had like 1,500 comments and niggas threatening me, going in on me, everything. Yeah. But, all I did was break down the information that the police came out. That was already out. And I would just say, you know, Rollo probably could have could have been a little bit more low key. You know what I'm saying? That's all I was saying. Cause like, if a yeah. nigga go to the feds and he been showing millions of dollars, it's like, okay, cash. Like this nigga Rollo, I fuck with Rollo the long way. Yeah. Fucks with that nigga freedom ASAP immediately. Yeah, yeah. I fuck yeah. with him because Rollo was the, the the nigga that actually was on the streets feeding the homeless. I never seen nobody do it like that. Why yeah. I took, I bought an apartment complex, took care of my entire family, all my niggas, and we Muslims. We preaching, we 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 following our, our faith and our belief. Yeah. And overall, you know, Rollo would do some crazy shit sometimes, but he had a positive message. Yeah. And he genuinely wanted to help people and did. Yeah. And he a soldier, so I was like, you know, but he just made some some he could have did things a little differently. But niggas on YouTube, you know. Hey nigga, you a snitch, nigga. Why you putting all this on? I'm like, bro, I'm reading from off the fucking website. <laughs> See, I like that. Uh, yeah. Your commentary, bro. It's yeah. a lot of shit about you. I feel like it's similar to me. That's why I fuck yeah. with it. Yeah. Like you, you make the distinction between real and gangsta a lot. Yeah. Your morals, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. How you came up and exactly. I, I like that. It's not because I, I, I won't glorify. You yeah, know we're not. I'm not glorifying niggas beefing or going to jail. It, it go down. I know it go down. I done have. A, a, a nigga I was cool with, like, you know what I'm saying? Get locked up for killing somebody else I was cool with. Yeah. You feel me? I know niggas who got, you know what I'm saying? All this shit in due time. I know niggas doing 30 and, and well, went to high school with and went to middle school with niggas who doing 30 and 40. And it's like, bro, I'm not finna glorify this shit. Yeah. Like, on some shit. I don't rap. That's what, rap is entertainment. So they yeah. have to glorify it like a movie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They selling entertainment. But me, nigga, I'm not finna. Hype these kids up to, or these young niggas, or any nigga, niggas my age too. Hey, bro, go smoke this nigga, bro. He yeah. talking down on you, nigga. Go shoot the nigga. What? Like, hell yeah, nah, nigga. Yeah. So, I, that Rollo shit got me going first. And then after that, I would just go in the streets and do interviews. But I felt like my biggest interview, obviously, is the Sauce Walker. Oh, yeah, yeah. That did on the view side, because I go off of impact interviews, really, yeah. bro. I don't be paying it. If you get locked into the views on your content, bro, you never gonna be happy. You never, unless you're a nigga that just, all right, I'm doing 30,000 or 40,000 or 100,000, but yeah. this, this YouTube shit is up and down, bro. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Exactly. You can interview a good nigga and still not get no views. It be like that sometimes. Yeah, real time. So you can't get caught up in that. So I go off the impact and what was really said because yeah. content is timeless, bro. If exactly. it's good, niggas are gonna be able to circle back and still get from it or rewatch it again or nigga might watch it 15 times because it was good yeah so sauce walker interview did that for me that nigga had just copped the rolls i remember that and uh had the rims on that bitch pulled up in my name he being he pulled up to my neighborhood i was outside yep. he was like man let's get some in nigga like he already know like we hadn't done an interview before we had did a couple vlogs yeah so you know any nigga doing media in houston bro your goals one of your goals. Texas, period. Yeah. To get sauce yeah, especially if you an ace time, nigga. I mean, yeah. This is media. This ain't about do you like the nigga or not, or do you listen to his music or not. This nigga got the biggest impact in the streets of Houston. Yeah. When we talking about as a whole, like the, the yeah. he got the biggest impact. That's undeniable. So it's like to get that interview, I felt that hey, once I did the sauce interview, that hey niggas gonna really start tapping in. Like yeah. everybody gonna start tapping in. Yeah, Everybody seen it, but this Houston, bro, they gonna make it hard for you. Niggas still ain't tap in. Man. Even with that whole doing 400K. Yeah, that's fucked up. One video did 400K, like 430K. The other one did like 53. Uh, one of them did like 20, and I think the other one did like 50. 
Yeah. So that bitch probably sitting on over five hundred thousand total. And uh, I thought like that was like nigga, every rapper finna come fuck with a yeah. nigga now. Hell no. Nah. Cause, Cause you got a lot of underground artists on your shit. I guess are yeah. not mainstream Houston artists, but a lot of the Houston. I mean, you pretty much did all of the sauce though. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I, pretty, I did. Them. I did damn near the whole to yourself. You and, know, uh, I had. Uh, yeah, you did the peso. I got peso. I got drippy. I got uh, sauce wood, brazy. Yeah. Uh, got damn me uh, L train. Yeah. Gohan. Uh. The, one of the newest members, uh, we we gonna work because he already been around him for a couple years now. You know, said TSF crash. You know, so it's like, and I got Miss Megan. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I got yeah. I got everybody with yeah. the crew on this motherfucker. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Because and Rizzo, Rizzo, me and Rizzo, yeah. Rizzo. Uh, it's like one of them things where they see they working, I'm working. It only makes sense. Yeah. You feel me? I've been around them niggas for a couple years because of this. You know, this rap shit. And they got goals they trying to reach. I got goals I'm trying to reach. So it's like, it only makes sense. If they going hard, well, fuck it. Let's create content together when we can. I fuck and, with that. Yeah, so it's like, it just happened. We didn't speak about it. All this shit happened organically. Yeah. A lot of people think like, I have like a person. Some people have thought that I have a personal, like, I've been to niggas' cribs before to do work. You know what I'm saying? Shit yeah. like that. But it's not like I call nobody in TSF and, Hey, bro, let me sit on the phone. Like, you my nigga, I gotta talk to you three hours. It's just organic. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. this shit is organic, you know what I'm saying? And I like how, I like they work at it. Them niggas work like I work, you know what I'm saying? I work crazy, they work crazy, you know what I'm saying? Now, somebody who born and raised from Houston, who would you say you give the era to? The old era, the 2000s? 99, 2000, when y'all was on fire, switcher house, chameleon errors, yeah. Lil Flip, platinum, you know what I'm saying? Or yeah. now, you know what I'm saying? Like era, like who, who do it better? Yeah, which era are you more of a fan of or you feel like Ooh. it's better? I can't say, bro, because I fuck with both. I will say this. I love the shit I grew up on. That's our culture. That's our style. We loving that forever. That shit going to the grave with me screw head for life. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Always screw. Always using the ace tie culture, the image, and want to represent Houston as a whole. You know what I'm saying? I interviewed uh, Big Hawk Wife. Yeah. But I will say yeah. this: when we talking about creativity, this era is way more creative than the old era. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, a lot of niggas gonna be pissed off when I say that, <laughs> and I really, I'm just speaking facts. Yeah. Sauce in this era, Maxo Cream, Travis Scott. Way more creative yeah. as a whole. Like if you take the creativity, and I say that because we got like 15, 20 artists in Houston with a name that goes way outside of Texas. Yeah. And none of them sound alike. Exactly. Nobody. Travis Scott don't sound like nobody in Houston. Sauce don't sound like nobody in Houston. Maxo don't sound like nobody in Houston. OTB Fast Lane don't sound like nobody in Houston. Yeah. Megan the Stallion. Young Road, New Orleans, by Houston, by the way, in New Orleans, nobody. F and B Loan Money, nobody. Yeah. Lil Jeremy, everybody in Houston who got a name. O and B Bloodbath. And sorry about forgetting. I'm sorry, I, I don't be writing this shit down. Don't take it. But everybody that's rapping in Houston, none of these niggas sound alike. Everybody got their own sound. Yeah. Ain't nobody jocking each other. As opposed to when Screw was around, everybody knew how to rap. Everybody had their own like uh, cadence or whatever they did, voice flow, yeah. they patterns uh, and all that shit. But overall, if from the outside looking in, not from us, a lot of people would say, "Hey, man, that shit kind of all the same a little bit." Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Exactly. As opposed to now. Niggas yeah. think Houston ain't popping on the music scene. They still like, man, what happened to Houston? Like separate, Nigga, yeah. we got motherfucking Travis Scott and Megan the Stallion in Houston. What the fuck you mean? What happened? Nigga, and Lizzo. We, we, and Lizzo. Nigga, we got one of the biggest rap scenes in the you game. You know, like, what kind of was next for you, bro? Because it's like, okay, you got all of this shit going. You got, I mean, just your platform alone got, like, so many different segments. You got the news that I be, like, I got to tune into that shit. Like, even though I might see it on social media, I gotta see what you gotta say about it, or I gotta see your spin, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or yeah. how you gonna present it, you know what I'm saying? And that's what's uh, really keeping me afloat right there, man. You know, that that commentary, Yeah. I yeah, got yeah. real, like, I don't even call them fans, I call them supporters, bro, where 
like niggas be telling me like nigga man you motivate me to go chase something and do this and that and i'll be like damn bro like niggas and seen me out in the mall yeah and they be like man you big ant like and it's not coming from instagram it's all from youtube you yeah, know what i'm saying because yeah, yeah. i mean thirty four thousand that's a lot of people but you really don't be knowing who is reaching because it's youtube exactly and you're not following them back so you don't know who is and who ain't following you yeah so with them niggas like following me I, I don't know who they is so when a nigga walk up to me and like damn nigga i follow your shit and it's like damn but i want to take it to the highest level dog um just to give people an idea of what i what i really want to do i'm really trying to go to like a level of a uh charlemagne the god yeah 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 i'm trying to go up there with the greats but i'm covering it all like i'm i'm trying to do charlemagne the god where I can host the radio station and people coming there to see what my, they want to see me interact with the people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's coming on there, whether it be rap, hip hop, politicians, anybody, you know what I'm saying? Nice. Business owners, authors, uh, Instagram models, everything. They want to see, I want to see what Ant got, got to say to her. You know what I'm saying? Like that, like Charlemagne. And I want to write a book. You feel me? Yeah, I want to write a book. I want to have merch. I want to create a media platform. I want to play a role. If I see it's an artist that's in the streets working and grinding, I like his music because I love music. Hey, man, hey, I got a relationship at the label. Let me take that nigga up there, man. Like, I think he'll do something. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just all around for the culture and stamped, like, on some shit. Like, niggas at the top of this motherfucker, you know, like, you all around tastemaker and shit like that, man. Yeah, because I really feel like you already low-key doing that. Like, you don't really have a lane. Like, dude, yeah. I mean, is it like anybody that'll pay you, you'll do an interview with, or anybody you feel like you want to give a platform to? Because I feel like you're in every lane. Like, you, you do you rappers. Like you do real estate people, like you said. You do uh, entrepreneurs. Thanks. You do... Like shit, you'll probably Food do a truck barber. Owners. <laughs> yeah, I got one possibly coming with a barber. He from so, out here somewhere, actually. Oh yeah, see, so that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, do you feel like it's a specific lane you want to like cater to, or like? We like, everywhere. I ain't yeah. letting them box me in. They're that's like, what's so different. We, I ain't finna let them box me in. I'm trying to play the role of all these motherfuckers, man. Joe Rogan interview everybody. Yeah. Vlad interview everybody because everybody got it's content. It's the T. I wanted my YouTube channel and my platform to be like a TV show, where it's so much shit on there. Like, hey, I could just sit in here and get lost on this motherfucker. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All kind of shit. Exactly. Bro, I done did so many fucking interviews. No lie, bro. I probably done, done 300 interviews. Yeah. I got over 1,800 videos on the channel. Damn. Boy, probably stupid. 1,900. Because you got so many different. Lanes and, and shit. shit like that's why that. I was like, damn, this nigga and can't I, sleep. And I did all the editing on my own. I yeah. recorded it on my own, uploaded on my own. I'm always on the go. I dropped the interview yesterday. I'ma drop another video today. You and know you what I'm saying? And you seeing the shit. You seeing the fruits of your labor. That's what that's yeah. what inspired me. I gotta give you your flowers while you're here, bro, cause yeah. I see you get out the mud and now I'm seeing the YouTube checks. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a progression. Cause sometimes I get discouraged, like me being where I'm at. Even though I feel like my growth been fast for my first year, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But I still, when you aspire to be great and shit, it's like, damn, you just want the best. You want to hit every jumper, you know what I'm saying? Um, I used to quit like three times a week when I first started. <sighs> Man. I quit like three times a week for like, I wouldn't stop though. I quit, but I wouldn't stop yeah. if that makes sense. Like. I'll be in the crib like, man, is this shit worth it, bro? Is, I'm, am I looking like a clown nigga out yeah. here trying to chase this shit? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, niggas yeah. ain't fucking with me, bro. Niggas standing a nigga up. Nigga telling me to meet him over here and he ain't coming. And, bro, I, I only been doing this shit two and a half years. I lived a whole life before this shit. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't play. Nigga, nigga, I'm a, I don't give a fuck about that gangster shit. I don't give a fuck about that tough guy shit. Nigga, I'm a man. Nigga, don't yeah. tell me to meet you somewhere and don't come. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. man shit, nigga. Yeah, my, human I, shit. Yeah, like, nigga, I, I'm, I'm the nigga like this, bro. It's not, a, I don't want no motherfucking street stripes. I don't give a fuck about no street credibility. My thing is this. I was raised on morals and principles. Yeah. I grew up in a strict household, ass whoopings galore. A lot of niggas used to get choices. You want an ass whooping or you want to be on punishment. Nigga, I used to get both. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I grew up outside drinking out the water hose and, uh, Riding bikes, building bikes in Louisiana and shit, and and, and uh, 
punching in the box of gloves. Nigga, as a kid, I didn't got hit in the mouth with the box of gloves. I had braces, bust my whole shit up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like all that type of shit. Like we was outside niggas growing up. So like, you know what I'm saying? Nigga running outside, kill a man with the football shit going on. So yeah. it's like, I'm not like these niggas with shit like that. I don't even play with people like that. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I keep it gangsta. I keep it solid with niggas and respectful. You know what I'm saying? And that's gangster to me. Gangster is being able to show respect. Gangster is handling your responsibilities. You know what I'm saying? I handle situations in the moral codes that gangsters are supposed to. But yeah. I'm not out here trying to be the tough guy and shit like that. So I fuck with that. So like that and, and and so that's why you see me like respond to niggas and check shit like, hold on, nah nigga. Cause like I know I seen it, bro. Where if you let a nigga get over on you, more niggas gonna keep coming to get over on you. Cause you really went at Vlad, bro. Like you ain't really let Vlad slide, uh, and that's probably one of your idols and shit. Uh, I don't idol Vlad. I respect him. Okay, that's the right one. I don't idol. I'm inspired by all these niggas. Let me say that. Yeah. I inspired. I'm inspired by their work ethic and their consistency. Uh, Vlad TV, and I'll just name the top niggas right now in the game. Vlad TV. Give me an order, top five. I can't give you the order, but uh, I'll give you the okay. niggas. But if I got to say one, I'm going to say the most important. I want to say I'm going to give you an order that I can just freestyle, but say cheese is more important than Vlad TV I to get, us. Exactly. Say cheese could take a nigga off this motherfucking porch over here to the record label. Vlad TV is not doing that. Yeah. No jumper is not doing that. It's a whole different system. Like, <laughs> no, say cheese taking niggas from the motherfucking trap, they grandma highs, they own little apartment, whatever, to, hey, I'm finna walk you in a, in, a, in a billion dollar company at a record label and let you talk to these people. They yeah. wanna meet you. Is, is Vlad TV finna come out to Dallas or Fort Worth and, and, and or, uh, uh, Ace Time and say, man, let me go to Acres Home and Ace Time or Greens Point and Ace Time or Fifth Ward and man, let me take you to the label, bro, because I think your talent is dope and I yeah. want to help you. Yeah. But of course, I want something out of myself. It's business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's business. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like I'm supposed to put the niggas on and not get a piece of the pie. Nah, that's not how it work. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, who want to do this shit for free? Like, hell nah, nigga. Exactly. So, like, say cheese is more important to the culture. For us, nigga, yeah. for niggas in the streets or niggas in the say cheese more important than all them niggas. I don't give a fuck what they talking about. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. talking about catering to us, yeah. our culture. I so agree. with that being said, though, when you overall looking at it, you gotta go Vlad number one because it's Vlad. He's the person talking. It's his voice. You got pl platforms with more subscribers than Vlad, but it's a whole corporation where you don't. It ain't no person running it. Yeah, as yeah, opposed yeah. to Vlad is the boss of his shit, so you gotta go Vlad number one. I gotta go no jumper number two. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When we talking about just straight niggas who YouTube content creators. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, uh, no jumper number two. DJ Academics number three. Yeah. Okay. Um, number four. I damn near want to probably throw that nigga what you call it up there, man. Uh, DJ Ghost. Okay. I I never say I don't know if he just really breaks niggas from the dirt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know if he just really break niggas from the dirt like that, but he tapped in and he deals with the artists. Okay. You feel me? He got relationships at, at part relationships at labels where you know labels gonna reach out and get him to review certain artists. Yeah, but yeah. he tapped in in the culture. He know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? He know what's popping. So that's four. Uh, who else is like a nigga who? I'm, and these the niggas who got their name and their face with they shit. Yeah. Even though you don't see Vlad face on his interviews, you can find out what he look like. Yeah. Vlad voice is his face. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, number five, man, who else is doing this shit on some, like, independent ass shit? Man, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I gotta probably go with DJ Small's eyes. I fuck with DJ Small's eyes. His yeah. interviews are very different to me. Yeah. He's asked some questionable shit that I would never ask a nigga. But I respect all these niggas' work ethic. I, uh, I watch they shit, study they shit. Yeah. They all lit as fuck. They all turned up, and, and I'm a supporter of every brand I just named. Whether I, I disagree with shit, and I will make content about yeah. how I do disagree with they shit. Yeah. That's not me saying when I see you, I'm going to fight you. Yeah. Exactly. Or if I see you, it's beef. No, nigga, I'm just doing what y'all do to rappers. Yeah. You critique rappers, I'm going to critique you. We critique me too. If I fuck up or do something wrong, because I fuck up, I'm human. 
I yeah. make mistakes. I say shit wrong. So, you know, put it out there if I do that. Expose the nigga. You know what I'm saying? On some real shit, like, hey, man, you said this wrong. Duh, duh, duh. And if I'm wrong, I don't got no problem saying I'm wrong. You know what I'm saying? I apologize. So, I fuck with all them niggas. Them, them the niggas. For sure. And uh, as far as, like, the, the catchphrases, bro, stay on your pivot. Uh, yeah. Boss player tactics. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Is it one I'm forgetting? It got to be one I'm forgetting, bro. Uh, politically inclined. Politically inclined, yeah. yeah. Politically inclined. Where did you get these? And, like, I feel Polit like these are part of separating you because, like, now yeah. I'm, I'm knowing you for it. You know what I'm politically saying? Politically inclined came from Mozzie. Okay, I was yeah, jamming yeah. that nigga, bro, every day. You know, so he's all talking about the politics and the interviews. I'm talking with Mozzie. Then he had no chain, man. He just had that wordplay. I was hooked when I heard it because I grew up like jamming E40 and Too Short. My pops used to jam them niggas. So he got that whole little Cali proper type shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you got a picture of a nigga like me who grew up jamming that shit. I'm already a big time Detroit fan. Yeah. You know, they kind of got similar styles and yeah. cadences, even though Mozzie not from the Bay. Yeah. Sacramento, you know, the sack is a kind of influenced and inspired by the Bay musically a little bit. So it's like, I was just like, you know, hey man, I, I fucks with Mozzie, long way, just his whole everything. So I, I implemented that into it, you know what I'm saying, with the politics. And Money Man had a lyric where he said, man, if you say you're a plug, let me politic with you. Yeah. On that Ryu. Ryu. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that stuck with me, you know what I'm saying? I was like, man, let me politic with you, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So that Even was said that. said it on that drop, too, Mozzie. Yeah, Mozzie drop. said it on the drop. Yeah. And I already knew he had to, when I told him my name, when I met the nigga, I was like, when I tell this nigga Urban Politicians, he finna go crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and it was crazy because he did it just that. He said, nigga, Urban Politicians, nigga, I am an Urban really Politicians, just, nigga. He was already on it. You ain't had yeah. to even tell him to say this shit on Nah, him. nah, cause I was kind of like leaning to, I was just politically this, politically corrected. You know what I'm saying? Like that. But he came with the politically inclined, and I said, you know what, nigga? I'm, st I'm sticking with that. I had already say him, heard him say that before in, in somewhere. So I kind of ran with it, but I didn't stamp it. But once he said it, oh, I'm running with that whole nine, nigga. Yeah. I'm politically inclined on everything, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, stay on your pivot was an inspiration. You know, that's always been an old school slang, nigga. Stay yeah. on your pivot. But I got the, what made me turn it into stay on your pivot or doing this. Kodak my cousin. Yeah. When he say niggas try to get me knock me off my pivot. And I was oh, like, yeah, I was yeah. jamming my Kodak my if you don't like Kodak Black, put in Kodak Black my cousin and listen to the wordplay and the bars. You gonna you gonna be a fan of him after that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And he was just talking that shit. He said niggas try to knock me off my pivot. And I and I was just like, damn, this nigga Kodak, just the demeanor he delivered it in. So that's when I, I got with the stay on your pivot. And, that's the three slang terms I just use real heavy. Oh, boss player tactics. Boss player tactics, yeah. Uh, that came from, like, tactics came from my boy. Uh, I use the word tactics from Boston George, man. Okay. Uh, Boston George had a song, got got a song called Plug. And uh, he said, I, I'm fucking with the what such and such. I'm trying to find the tactics. We use the tactics. Yeah. Got to work doing flips, out gymnastics or something like that. And tactics always been stuck in my head. And then... I just always was like, bro, I gotta come with some shit that's like cool, but it ain't doing too much. So I came with boss player tactics. And I wanted to have my own shit, how sauce got drip and like, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Where it still like relate to women and lifestyle. So boss player tactics is not about who got the most money. It ain't about who got the most bitches. It ain't about who got the most cars. A boss player tactics is just a tactic, it's an execution yeah. of something. That's a tactic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Right now, nigga, we out here working. Oh, what's today, Sunday? Yeah. We It's Sunday, a lot of niggas in the crib sleep. Yeah. We out working, it's hot as fuck outside, man. Yeah. Like, out here riding around, uh, this a boss player tactic, man. Yeah, Cause like we trying it. to get better. And we staying on our pivot. We staying on our everything. So boss player tactics, hey, nigga, it's your kid's birthday, you surprise them, you take them somewhere that they ain't know they was going. 
That was a boss player tactic, my nigga. Yeah. Like you put a that. you put a smile on your kids' face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your I'm bitch, fucking. bitch been down forever, man. You just out of nowhere. I'ma take my bitch out, get her a massage, take her out to eat. That's a boss player tactic. I fuck with that. It shit. ain't about, you know what I'm saying? Like what niggas thinking is, you feel me? I see some niggas misusing that term too, yeah, man. I come fuck with it. come holler at me, let me educate right, you on it. We we fucking uh, uh politic and politically inclined. We updating these niggas, man. Yeah, for sure. So. And shit, like like I was saying earlier before I got cut off like yeah. the uh the shit you know what i'm saying like why you feel like the media houston scene like y'all been a premier city in in uh texas really in the south shit not really yeah. in the fucking nation houston have been yeah. like the culture has spread around the nation and the world Top and five, then especially sure. like yeah yeah like as far as the markets and the music mm -hmm. and then in the south you know you're right there with atlanta so yeah. like why you feel like the media haven't really been you know, few, up until now, you know what I'm saying? A few things, man. I think, like, nobody left. Like, a lot of these media outlets, man, They when 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 they what they do is, like, in these other cities, they might be working for a radio station, and they might get fired or quit, and then they'll go start a media platform on their own. They just soaked a lot of game up and yeah. built relationships. So we never had nobody show us the, that. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, yeah. We had a couple DVD niggas early on, you know what I'm saying? A couple niggas doing DVDs and shit like that in the streets and the hood, but nobody really took it to the internet. We slow. Our whole culture musically was slow to get to the internet. Yeah. We was behind everybody, and that's what hurt us. That's why we kind of was silent a little bit for new, just big impact internet artists until sauce kind of broke, you feel yeah, me? Yeah. We had artists making noise, don't get me wrong, but it was like just everybody understanding tech in the internet sauce brought that to us you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah, yeah yeah so like you know once we started getting it understood niggas start seeing you know different people being able to do it and, and kind of get in the streets with it more niggas started coming around but the artists are still not understanding the importance of it they looking at it like i'm gonna tell you like this in houston man it you uh, most of these houston artists they ain't, they'll never admit it they saying fuck big ant, fuck urban politicians. Yeah. Some of them even saying they fuck with Stay Down Mo because Stay Down got the pop in Instagram. Yeah. So you know Instagram is everything to these rappers. Yeah. Exactly. They that's what the, so they they fuck with Stay Down, but they don't give a fuck that I got thirty some thousand YouTube yeah. subscribers. They yeah. they like nigga, we your Instagram. You only got six thousand Instagram, nigga. Yeah. They exactly. don't give a fuck, nigga. That sauce interview did sauce interview did four hundred thousand. You getting paid off YouTube, or you didn't did over eight million, nine million views, and what? At the end of the day, nigga, your Instagram ain't lit. Like, we want to be popping on Instagram, so they not understanding that YouTube is a roll of the dice. You feel me? Yeah. You throwing your shit on the dice table to what, nigga? This I could blow off a YouTube interview. Yeah, exactly. They don't. They don't think like that. They want instant gratification, and niggas think, hey, nigga, if it ain't say cheese in Texas, fuck you. It's niggas who think like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't get yeah. it. Or some niggas is just looking at it like, I don't want to support that nigga because I see his ass in the streets. Like I say, I've been outside regularly. How I be outside like on this shit every yeah. day? Because I was already doing that. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. already popping. I was already in the popping out. Not yeah. popping, but popping out on the spots. I was already in the clubs. I'm already in the bars. I'm already in the restaurants. I'm already kicking it with player niggas. I got got a cousin that was an athlete, you know what I'm saying, for the Cowboys. Got at partners that's athletes in different cities, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I've been on the scene and in the mix a little bit. I just didn't fuck with everybody like close-knitted. But niggas like, man, I see him around. What I want to spend with him for? He too close, you feel yeah, me? Yeah, exactly. I'm not finna lie. And then they be in competition. Some of these rappers in competition with me because they look like, hey, nigga, I'm not really... I'm supporting you instead of me using your platform. It looked like, hey, I need you. Yeah. I don't want you to feel like I need you, nigga, because you from Houston. Like, I don't need you, nigga. Yeah, exactly. And I'm going to tell you some crazy shit on camera, bro. It's some rappers, and I want them to understand because it's, it's a few of them. I'm not directing this to nobody. Y'all have reached out to out-of-town YouTubers, out-of-state YouTubers, some of y'all, and I know them niggas. Damn. But y'all ain't fuck with me. Yeah, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, but that's the confusion that Houston has. We're like, so man, I got no a whole bunch. Like huh? It ain't no unity like, like you want to Fuck like nah. Fuck nah, we ain't got no unity, man. Like, yeah. it's got 10 times better, though. It's 100 times better than it was back in the day. North, south shit. No, so even, after, even north versus north. 
No, yeah. it was a lot of North versus North and South versus South. Don't think it was niggas in, in SUC that didn't like each yeah, other. Screwed yeah, yeah. up clicking in different hoods, same hood niggas, different blocks who didn't like each other. Like, don't it was never just all unified in Houston. We we real divided and ego driven, bro. Like, yeah. and I got my ego where I will reach out to niggas if I really feel like it's worth it and they yeah. go hard. But a lot of niggas be having like a little snob thing, like a little snobbiness to them. Yeah. So I won't reach out to them because if they kind of try to play me, I'm going to feel like I got to let them know. Yeah, yeah, and that yeah. can lead somewhere that I'm a man, bro. I'm not out here trying to fight niggas, bro. I don't, I'm not a boxer. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not a boxer and I'm not a hunter, nigga. I don't get yeah. to kill food and go eat it or win a goddamn uh, 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 trophy because I hit the most targets, nigga. Yeah. I don't got time to be beefing with niggas and shit about this shit, man. So it's just like, but I can't let you disrespect me because then everybody going to want to disrespect the nigga, especially Houston. Houston, a bully city. Yeah. Like, niggas. You get respect in Houston for if you a nigga that's known for knocking niggas out. Yeah, yeah. I think that's everywhere though, but yeah. Houston for sure. Like, you known for taking shit down or knocking some niggas out. Niggas in Houston be having the utmost respect for that shit. Like, yeah. so it's just what it is, bro. I gotta stand firm in this shit, especially because I go everywhere one deep. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I gotta stand firm. And shit, what you think next for you know what you got going or where you see yourself in the next two to three years? Like, what we got to look out for, man. <sighs> Hey, nigga, we going to the top, wherever it is. We not stopping. Uh, I'm going to tell you like this, man. We going to, ain't no ceiling on this shit. I ain't going to let y'all put no ceiling. We coming all the way media company, all around influence, all around tastemaker, all around media personality, creating opportunities. I'm trying to get rich. I, I want the goal, the ultimate goal is to get rich doing what I love to do while helping others get rich doing what they love to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I want to just say that, like a lot of niggas say, man, I don't need this rap shit, I already got money. Hey, my nigga, I need this rap shit. Yeah. Shout out to the rappers that feel like they don't need it, because I feel like they do need this rap shit. You feel me? Or yeah. why would you not be doing it? Exactly. Just say this, you're not going to sell your soul for this rap shit. Yeah. But you need right. this rap shit, I don't give a fuck what you got. Cause you wouldn't be doing it. if you in the streets. You need to get out them streets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I need it all. Even what they like. A lot of niggas is on. They got jury. They got money. They got cars. They got hoes. Hey, I need all that shit on another level. I need all them bitches that come with this shit. Yeah. Not the artists. Not the female artists. Not yeah, the female yeah. artists or the female creators. Nobody the working with the ones who have chosen to uh. Oh, they on a groupie lifestyle. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. They, 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 that's a phase for women. Yeah. I feel like women grow out of that. The yeah. ones that's in that phase, come on, I need you. Yeah, like, yeah, let me yeah, have yeah. a good time because I like living life. All that. I need that. I need that motherfucking big mansion. I need to get my mama a crib, nigga. I need three or four watches for when I go to a meet and I can have a choice. I need that foreign. I need to create jobs to where my niggas can do this same shit. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I need to have like 30 artists that I work with in Houston and we just a conglomerate. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. it's up, man. It's up. Man, shit, I appreciate you, bro. You somebody I gotta give you flowers too that yeah. I seen watching and inspired me doing what I'm doing, Same bro. Here, bro. For somebody from, you know, almost 2K subscribers to somebody with 30, 30K. Sure. You know what I'm saying, it wasn't bro. easy, but you coming, man. You yeah. working. Big shout out while I'm here. The whole motherfucking DFW. Shout out all the artists out here, all the platforms. If you out here, Hey, I fuck with all y'all shit. I'm subscribed to all your shit. If you rapping, you making noise. Everybody in Dallas, I fuck with all y'all niggas the long way, nigga. From goddamn Yellow Beezy, Mo Three, goddamn Trap Boy Freddy, uh, the uh, Baby Youngin. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who else we got? Lil Runny motherfucker. That nigga hard as fuck. He from yeah. Dallas, right? Yeah. Hey, Not yeah. for work. Yeah, yeah. All them half pipe. Shout out to half pipe for having that big ass platform out here, nigga. Yeah. You a fucking legend. Uh, say cheese for shit show. Uh, Hood fame, goddamn casino, casino world. Uh, shout out to everybody, man. I fuck with everybody out here doing their thing. All the content creators. If I left you out, it's not nothing personal. I just ain't got everything on my head. I fuck with the DFW and the whole Houston dude, man. Get. I don't know who be trying to say we don't fuck with niggas out here. That is false, nigga. Everybody in Houston is watching what y'all got going on. Yeah. Ask the artists who got a name how many features they book in Houston, and we'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. Shit, sure. Shit, we'll fuck with you. I had to drive a seat, man. Yeah. H-Town.